Hello guys. So I was filming my mid-year language learning review and I was showing Notion, how I use Notion for language learning, but I thought it would be also nice to make a video about Notion and reading tracker um, and my reading system in Notion. Because uh, before this, I was using my uh, physical notebooks that I wrote down every book that I was reading and also my reviews of the books. And I still tried to do that, but I realized that I wasn't updating the notebooks on a daily or even weekly basis. So sometimes I would start reading a book, but I, it wouldn't be in a journal. And then I had to pick the time to uh, edit the journal and just review all the books that I have read so far or edit new books and it wasn't very efficient to see all the books that I was reading at the moment and also add some notes. Another thing that I couldn't do with a notebook of course was tracking all the books that I own um, because it's, it's very difficult and I have um, quite a few books. So I was looking for a system. I tried out Excel a couple of times to write down all the books that I own, but uh, I don't like using Excel. It's it's really not <laughs> pleasing on the eye. It's it's such a, a horrible program, actually. I don't really don't like using Excel. And this year I invested a lot of time into Notion and to use Notion for language learning. And then I was like, well, why not also for reading? So I started both data sets for language learning for reading kind of similar at the same time. Edited the data set, make it bigger, and now I have multiple things that I can track with it. So it's not a complete yet. So not all of the books that I own are in this data set. Uh, I still have to add a lot of them. But every time I buy a new book or get a new book as a gift or just, I don't know, have a new book in my collection, I will add it into Notion immediately. So all the new books that are coming up are at least organized and also every book that i'm currently reading will also be added all the readings from now will be organized but everything that i already own or have read i'm still working on that to get that into notion but i will show you what i have so far so this is my reading page i have here books and reading trackers this is the page that i use the most then i have historical terms and events uh, things that i learned from books i can put it in here and discover vocabulary and terms. So this is mostly for vocabulary in English or Dutch, or maybe Russian, if I'm reading something in Russian. For uh, Spanish and Japanese and other languages, I am using my language learning data set, of course. And some quotes. Uh, I think these ones are still a little bit empty, but the books and the reading tracker is not. So if I click on that, I will come to this page. And here I have everything that I need for my reading. So here's a quick view of some of the data sets that I'm using. And here's all of them. So we have the reading tracker itself. It does contain all the books that I am currently reading or have read so far. It looks like a lot, but some of them are for language learning, like this two, O Principito and Hoshino Oji Sama. The Bible is something that I'm reading for I think a long time and I'm not going to finish it soon and I haven't made much progress in it and it's just something that I want to read at least once in my lifetime so it's always uh, on here I think uh, for so far I'm reading it. Then I have another book for language learning, Harry Potter y la Piedra Filosofal for Spanish. I have House of Leaves reread which I started but I have haven't finished it yet and I'm currently not reading it actively <laughs> it's still on here but I I want to continue reading it but I stopped for a while and I started in February so it it has been a while and there are a couple non-fictions that I'm reading for a longer time so that's the reading tracker and I can click on it and go to the actual data set where I can see all of the books that I've read so far, so in 2023, it's not a lot. I have done a lot of reading this year, unfortunately, and I still have to do a lot <laughs> because I wanted to read 50 books. I have read some interesting books. Um, so in the beginning of the year, I read The Lottery, which I really liked, um, The Danger of Smoking in Bed. I read Farewell to Arms, uh, which is a book by Ernest Hemingway, that, and it's the first book that I read by him. And it was such a good story, such a good book. And the ending was very tragic, but I really loved reading it. Um, it was for the A Game of Domes book club that I wanted to join this year. This is the only book that I have finished so far from the book club, So, um, but I really enjoyed it. The next book that I want to read uh, is The Stranger, and I'm currently reading The Brothers Karamazov, which is also part of the book club, but I'm 
really slowly uh, in Russian, so it, it takes a while. And The Stranger by Albert Camus is the, the next book that I'm going to read from the book club list. So in 2022, uh, not all of the books that I've read that year are in here. I still have to update this one, but a couple of them are. So yeah, that's what I do. I have here the book. The author uh, first published, sometimes I will fill that out, not for all books as you can see, but I try to do it. The genre of the book, I find that one also important. How many pages the book contains, I have still to do that for a lot of books. When I started reading it and when I finished it reading it and what was the reading time. And as you can see in 2022, I was reading quite quickly except for this one and I think that's uh, A Game of Thrones. Yeah, A Game of Thrones, it, it took me a while, 88 days. But if you look at uh, this year, we see that I'm reading a lot slower, unfortunately. And it's because I had to work on my thesis. Like I said in my previous video, it took a lot of time and my reading was very slowed by it. I'm also still using Goodreads. So uh, when I finish or start a book, I immediately put it into Goodreads and then I put it in here. I have multiple systems and I try to still use the notebooks as well. This is everything that I'm reading and I still have to update it a little bit. Then I have my TBR and it's not what I want to read exactly, it's what I want to buy. So these are the books that I want to read but do not own yet. Because the books that I already own and still need to read, obviously they're also on my TBR, but this is like the TBR that I still have to buy. I have a couple of books in here. These are this is the data set that I keep track of all my spendings and how many books I've bought this year and you can see it's quite a lot because I bought a lot of thrifted books and also I went to the book fair where I found a lot of interesting books but the books that I really spent some money on more than like a couple of uh, euros are these two also this one that I bought at the university bookshop Hiking with Nietzsche it's a philosophy book that I really wanted to read and the book fair I <laughs> spent a lot of money on the book fair because it, there were a lot of interesting books that I had found I have a list of all the genres that I have read and I keep track of them so if I click on a genre let's say horror then I see all of the books um, all the books that I've read uh, the books that are on my TBR in the genre and also all of the authors that write in this genre that I have read it's a nice way of keeping track of authors and books so for philosophy I have read Dostoevsky I think that's he writes a lot of philosophical work so that's why he is in here uh the car and chomsky noam chomsky and these are the books that i've read and i don't have anything on my tbr for now for magical realism i have haruki murakami uh, isabel Allende, and ray bradbury um and nothing on the tbr for now i also have the authors in one data set which is nice then i can also keep track of them uh, and i have 91 others in this data set and I, I only write down the books that i have read from that author so not all the books that i own because that would be a lot more books and i only want to see which books have i read in one glance and i keep track of their age i don't know why but i find it interesting and uh, <laughs> that also means that I, I do not track when they died or at least I do track it but I do not subtract it from the age so we have here Mikhail Bulgakov he was born in 1891 so right now he would be 132 years obviously he died in 1940 uh 1940 I'm always bad with numbers um but yeah, I like to keep track of it. That gives me like a feeling like how old a certain book is or how old certain writers would be or how long ago it was. So yeah, so it's not that he is 132 years right now. So here, here we have René Descartes. He is um, right now, he would be 427 years. So this is the uh, that's it for the authors. And then I have countries. It's also a thing that I like to track how much variety there is in my reading as it comes to uh, countries. So we have Argentina, which is the country where Mariana Enriquez is from. The Dangers of Smoking Bed is the book that I've read. Uh, from Chile, I have Isabel Allende with Eva Luna. From England, I have a couple. Japan, of course. Uh, so most of the books that I am reading are from Japan or America, as you can see. Then the next data set is all of my books. So it's all of the books that I physically 
own and it's a big data set for uh, right now it's uh, contains 103 books but i have many more so i still have to edit them and yeah i track here the cover the name of the book the author genre country uh, the publisher i will try to add that one as well if i have read the book and what rating I give the book, in which language I've read it or own the book, and the created time when I put it in the system. And also, important one, the reading notes. So the reading notes refer to the data set where I track my reading. So we see that I have read Eva Luna, and we can go to the data set and we will see the notes on that book. But I haven't put any like actual notes in here and I want to reread this book someday. So maybe I will make a reread note in here. But yeah, I can uh, do that for a lot of books. And if I have read the book, I should have a reading note. So for the House of Leaves, we see that I have House of Leaves reread and House of Leaves when I read it originally. And I also track if I put in the rating, I track um, what the average the average is of my rating, which is uh, 3.8 right now, which is, I think, correct. Most of the books are between three and four, a couple of five star reads, but mostly between three and four stars. So yeah, this is like uh, the whole data set for now um this one this ones are i think I, I added them yesterday i tried to really work <laughs> on the complete data set and then lastly i have data set for the publishers it's not really up to date right now uh, i don't do much with this but uh, yeah i have a couple of publishers and eventually i want to see which publishers i have the most books of if you look at penguin i have a, a different kinds of i have penguin random house penguin and also i think penguin oh yeah, penguin modern classics and i have also penguin classics so it's all from penguin but they have different parts so i track them differently like for penguin classics i have the penguin book of hell and, and against nature a passage to india tender is the night so i have a couple of books from this publisher i i'm not really into publishers but i try to track it and on this page i can add all the books that i'm currently reading very fast the books that i have bought so yesterday or uh, the day before yesterday, I have bought two books, Haunted and The Cabin at the End of the World. I really want to uh, read this one as soon as possible because the movie is also coming out. Of maybe it already came out, I don't know. But I want to read the book first and then uh, watch the movie. But yeah, this is everything that I am tracking in my reading. Uh, if I go to the quotes, I don't think... No, I, I don't have anything in here yet. And um, by this in discovered vocabulary... Oh! I have one word, <laughs> Kafkaesque, to describe absurd situations like those depicted in Kafka's writing. So it's a term that I learned uh, somewhere and I uh, put it in here. Historical terms and events, nothing in here. Oh, yes, I do have some things. Austro-Hungarian Empire and Guangzhou Uprising from Human Acts, uh, the book by Hong Kong. So, yeah. I do have some things in here, but not a lot. <laughs> this was everything from my um, reading corner. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it and I hope it will motivate you to track your own reading and books. And yeah, Notion is a program that you can use for it. But uh, it's, this video is not sponsored by Notion. I just like using it. There are multiple other options to choose from. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.